Hello, welcome back to the Lizelle Wellbeing YouTube channel with me, Lizelle. Well, today we're going to be talking about the F word, fat. So for such a long time, fat has been demonised in the media. You know, we've long been pushed this message that to have a balanced diet, we need to be eating less fat, around 60 to 80% carbs a day. And it's just not working. It's just not working anymore. Did it ever work? More of us than ever are overweight. Type 2 diabetes has quadrupled since the 80s. More and more of us are now waking up to realise that the messages that we've been peddled over the years just aren't working. We need fats in our diet and they help us to absorb fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E. They provide fatty acids that can contribute to better brain health and they also reduce cravings by keeping us feeling fuller for longer. There are just so, so many benefits, but for some reason, the dietary powers that be, driven maybe by the ultra-processed food industry, has decided that fat is the enemy. It is exhausting. Well, since switching up my diet and opting for a protein and fat-first approach with my first meal of the day, I find I feel fuller for longer. I'm no longer reaching for the biscuit tin come three o'clock. And far from gaining weight from eating more fat, I actually look and feel like I am in better shape than ever, truly. So what are my go-to sources for fat? Well, let's dive in. Okay, first up, the favorite of many a well-being warrior is of course, avocados. These are full of healthy fats. Each avocado contains around 30 grams of fat, but they're also rich in other nourishing goodies like fiber, magnesium, vitamin C, vitamin E, B6, a real well-being win. So I might even eat an avocado even as my first meal of the day alongside some protein like a poached or a boiled egg. If you're absolutely craving carbs, you could enjoy with some smashed avocado on a nice bit of sourdough toast, but do try it without. You know, you might just be surprised how full you feel even without the slice of bread. Maybe try on a bed of greens instead. Now, of course, when it comes to avocados, there are quite a few ethical issues surrounding them. And in recent years, the demand for avocados has grown so much that growers, particularly around Central America, are often targeted by criminal gangs in exchange for a share of the profits. Not only that, they tend to take a lot of water to grow and the demand for them is causing deforestation, a loss of biodiversity and a depletion of really important minerals in the soil. So given that me and many of you who watch this channel are based in the UK, there is also a big carbon footprint in transporting them as well. So what to do? Well, enjoy in moderation would be my advice. And if like me, you're based in the UK, opt for European grown organic avocados where possible. Spain is usually a good bet if you look at the little label. Okay, so enough about avocados. Moving on, next up is cheese full of fat and other beneficial morsels like calcium for bone strength, vitamin B12 for energy, cheese, it's an absolute must in my fridge. It's something that you will always find in there one way or another. Now, it can be a really helpful snack to opt for if you're feeling peckish, often one of my favorite swaps actually for when I'm in need of a little bit of a salty crunch that you might get from something like a crisp is to go for a little bit of anchovy, a little bit of gorgonzola scooped onto a chicory leaf. Oh my goodness, try it. I just love it. It's really good for that crunchy craving. Well, if I'm going out for dinner, I tend to go for the cheese plate instead of a sugar, sugar laden pudding. Um, can't resist a dessert if it's put in front of me, but a plate of cheese will be just as satisfying and it won't raise my GI levels, the glycemic index levels, like an overly sweet dessert does. So cheese for me is always a win. Now olives, olive oil, you name it, love it. So many benefits in these small but mighty fruits. So fat is a big component of olives. Each olive typically is around 11, 12% fat, a lot of which is monounsaturated fatty acid, one called oleic acid. This is also the main component of olive oil. And studies show that this particular fatty acid has a number of health benefits, including a reduced risk of heart disease, and decreased inflammation levels in the body. And with many of the world's most long-lived people living in the Mediterranean, 
full of olive oil. Well, there must be something in it, mustn't there? Plus, you know, olives are actually full of fibre. They're also very high in vitamin E, so they're really good for the skin. I love the mighty olive in one form or another. Most days I cook a lot with olive oil. And again, while that has long been demonised in favour of other oils to cook with, olive oil is actually one of the most heat stable. And I also love to drizzle it cold extra virgin olive oil, you can pop it over salads, on my veggies, once they're on my plate as well, just brilliant. So if I'm out at a restaurant, I really try and pass on the bread basket, head for a bowl of olives as a table snack instead. So, so good. Do you like olives? Let me know. Well, next up is oily fish. Yeah, again, so, so good for us. Oily fish like salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, herrings, otherwise known as SMASH, those five. They're an absolute bedrock in my diet, teeming with omega-3 fatty acids. These help to support healthy brain function, our heart, our joints, as well as general well-being. You know, fat is really important in the makeup of our brain and fatty acids are essential for brain function. So oily fish really can help to keep us feeling sharp. And there are lots of recipes on the Lizard Wellbeing website for oily fish, so do take a look. But again, you know, paired with some greens, they make such an easy, nourishing meal that will leave you feeling full and sustained. It really will just take you through the day with good nutrition. And finally, I couldn't finish this video without a nod to grass-fed butter. Again, something else that's been demonized in the media over the years, butter in place of those faux butters made from hardened vegetable oils and goodness knows what else. Butter is so good for us. It's a great source of vitamin A and healthy fats, as well as something called butyrate. Now we need this to strengthen the lining of our gut and it helps to promote a healthier microbiome. And if you opt for grass-fed butter, this is typically higher in omega-3 fatty acids, again, great for feeding our brain. Most organic butters come from cows left to graze naturally on the grass, and you'll see that on the label if you take a look. And there are some commercial brands that produce this too, such as Kerrygold, for example. You'll find that in most supermarkets. Kerrygold comes from Ireland, from cows that mostly graze on grass. It's a really good one to watch out for if you're out shopping. Well, you can add butter to vegetable dishes. You can use it, of course, in cooking. And obviously, you can spread it on bread. Who can resist a little bit on some sourdough? Just a bit of moderation, perhaps, when it comes to the bread. That bit, obviously. So that's it. What do you think? What have I missed? What are your favourite fats? As ever, do let me know in the comments below. My team and I really love to chat. And do make sure that you are subscribed to this channel by clicking the little channel icon below here. That makes sure that you never miss a video clip. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.